want to turn this over to, to Ariel Hubbard, and she is our marketing committee board liaison. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? You're coming through loud and clear. Thank you. Great. So um, I wanted to thank uh, Stephanie and Naomi for um, all their work and all the other people that help us with all of our many projects. We have also contributing members to our committee, Karen Menahan, Walt Fritz, Cherie sonnen Mo, Stan Dawson, and Karen Hobson have all been super helpful. Um, our overarching mandate is to support the brand and create consistent messaging in all communications for the Alliance. And our, our charges for the year have been to develop the marketing committee, develop the marketing plan with the help of the board of directors and other committees. So we have been working on creating specific tasks and priorities. We created a marketing plan. It was an extensive plan. Um, and it was based on board of director and committee contributions. We've been working on cultivating media relationships and developing contracts. We've been supporting other committees with marketing and attending committee needed. Um, we've also been coordinating implementation of the plan, developing marketing policies for submitting projects, maintaining the website, creating formatting and sending out our monthly newsletter, sending out press releases, designing promotional materials online and print, providing support for the 2016 annual business meeting and promoting the 2017 Educational Congress. So we've been very busy. Next slide, please. And our current projects are the monthly newsletters, press releases as needed, monthly social media content, website maintenance, article submissions, educational webinars, the annual business meeting, 2017 biennial, biennial Educational Congress and our print and web ads. Our, and actually I'm going to send this over to Stephanie because she's going to continue to talk about all the work and the accomplishments that we've, we've done. Thanks, awesome. Stephanie. Thank you, Ariel. And it's such a pleasure to work with both Naomi, everyone on the marketing committee, Ariel. It's been amazing because as you probably gathered, um, there's a lot of moving parts to the marketing side. And so as a consultant and part of the staff for AFMCE, one of the first things that we implemented was in order for us to achieve these lofty goals and to achieve the build out on the plan that we put together, we needed a lot of systems in place. So our focus was on planning, positioning, messaging systems and commitment. And we achieved a lot of it this year. So as Ariel mentioned, the 2016 annual marketing plan, we've had plans in the past, but this one was very detailed. It was over 26 pages of outlining with deadlines and, and setting it up, and, and I'm happy to say we've hit every one of them. We also had a thorough outlining of the AFMC newsletter annual schedule that now we can, it'll be that much easier going forward because it's a system, it's a template in place that we'll be able to um, to work on throughout. Also, it it works really well because then that content is then turned over to Naomi, who then uh, manages the uh, getting it to delivered to you on a timely basis. So that's awesome. Um, AFMTE social media protocols, objectives, and goals outlined thoroughly. Again, it, all of this is going to speed up the process and help. Uh, have us very focused and, and very congruent with our messaging because it was important that what we say on the website, we're also saying in social media and in emails and such to you. Um, as Naomi had mentioned, we set up a communication tracking so that now we get to see what you as members are most interested in as well. So we are always looking for great feedback on what you want to hear more of or more from from the board of directors in the EC. We created a marketing uh, committee orientation because we have uh, many different moving parts to the marketing side. As volunteers, um, we, with our committee, we want you to participate in, in areas that, you, that interest you the most. And so we have various levels for you to participate and um, you know, we've obviously you've seen contributing members. There are some people who have who work with the committee that only have maybe an hour a month, and so we have an orientation for each section of the marketing side of things. So that um, you know, and we're always looking for more volunteers. So make sure that you 
get with the LBC at AFMCE if you have an interest in that. Um, but it's also created 27 AFMCE branded inspirational and educational quotes on social media because from a social media standpoint, a lot of us learn with our eyes. So um, my company created those branded ones for the AFMC specifically. We also have business cards for the first year. Uh, our board members are with uh, uh, business cards. And as of last year, well, at the beginning of this term, we had the new membership certificate. So hopefully everyone has received that. That was a request from a previous uh, year, and so we've been instituting that and getting that out, so hopefully everyone's got their certificate hanging on their wall or on their desk in a frame. Uh, also, there is membership logos available, so that, that was another request that came in through the members that uh, they wanted to be able to promote that you are a member of the AFMCE, and there are specific on the website with each on each membership page how to download your membership logo. So if you haven't done so, you know please be sure to do that. Um, we set up a marketing policy and procedure as well as we have a marketing project form because we have so many moving parts. We've got different people. Um, requesting different uh, different items that need to be done and so we had to set up a process by which to um, communicate that information to you and so again going back to systems and processes the only way that we would be able to be effective with our communication was to have that type of system and policy and procedure in place for people to uh, complete and for us to be able to be authentic and transparent um, with our messaging back to you. Uh, we've also established a press release template. We've been able to work with our media sponsors. Again, uh, thank you so much to Massage Today and Massage Magazine and uh, the ABMP uh, for sharing the press releases that go out along with the rest of the collaborators and we're all working together and I think that it really is what's going to make a difference moving our profession forward. So we also have a six-week social media rotating uh, agenda. We have specific members that volunteers that submit content and then working with myself and Naomi, uh, making sure that that gets scheduled out. We have a membership interview plan and protocol so that those members are highlighted and featured in the newsletter. Um, we want to make sure that we have teachers and CE providers. And I really want to thank Ruth Werner has been absolutely awesome at getting a hold of the members and thank you to those members who have provided that information so definitely when Ruth reaches out to you make sure you get that back in a timely fashion because we certainly want to highlight you and um, in our in our monthly newsletters so to go over some of the online achievements our website average um, we have Still over a thousand visitors every single month. Um, 874 are new visitors coming to the site. So both are um, SEO as well as uh, to get new members is bringing new, new visitors in. And then uh, because it's important, we have resources not just for educators but also for massage therapists who are looking for continuing education courses. We have a continuing education. Uh, directory and that that by far is one of our most popular from the website our Facebook page this time last year we had 3,400 fans on our Facebook page and we I'm happy to report we had a 22 percent increase in our fans and our fans with our targeting audience and our targeting messages continue to increase and they're directly with educators continuing educators allied members uh, very specific and um, yes, and I do see the question about putting the link to the CE director directory on in the chat box. So Naomi, if you can grab that while while we're going through, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, we'll we'll definitely have it um, get it sent out in our follow up. Um, Twitter, we had a 39% increase in our Twitter following this time last year. We had 857 followers. We now have you know 1,193. 
Uh, LinkedIn continues to be a huge increase with the number of people and discussions happening there on a regular basis. People seem to really uh, enjoy our LinkedIn. So this is a graph of some of the content that we had, I've already talked about for the year, but this gives you an input as you can see. Uh, 2015, the amount of visitors to the website is high. Every year we have a, a conference uh, that always goes up. And so uh, if you look at 2014 when we didn't have a conference, compare it to 2016 where we're not having a conference, you can still see the increase there. So, um, and social continues to um, uh, have a, a constant um, amount of visitors. So and this is just another breakdown of where our traffic, where our leads specifically for 2016 were coming from. Uh, the bulk of it is the organic, uh, but the direct people putting in afmte.org, um, those two and the organic side of it is everything that we've done from an SEO standpoint on the pages themselves for getting traffic to the website. Social still uh, is, a, is a fairly good part of that. It's, it's over 8%. Um, so it's, it's um, a very significant portion of the amount of traffic that people are coming in and making purchases. Um, in uh, 2016, social media, even though we have a large following in our LinkedIn, it's still Facebook that the bulk of the uh, traffic is coming from. So obviously we want to make sure that we're maintaining great subjects and we're always looking for more feedback and for participation because we want to be sharing things that are important to our members. So we're continually taking feedback when people provide it. So thank you so much for, for those of you who do participate on a regular basis. And um, I'll mention that there is a survey at the end of our GoToWebinar and some of those questions pertaining to marketing because, again, you know, we're putting forth a lot of effort and investing a lot of hours into trying to make sure that we're providing you with great content that you're most interested in. So please let us know. Um, uh, our future plans and goals for 2017, as far as the marketing plan, we're going to start beginning our marketing um, on uh, August 1st. And our target to complete our new marketing plan will be uh, October 1st, and by completion, what I mean is we'll have it submitted to the board prior, but we're hoping to have uh, board approval by October 1st of 2016. 2017, the Educational Congress, this is an ongoing process, and thank you for those people who are supporting and already registering and signing up, and the sponsors and exhibitors. Um, Obviously, that's, that's off to a great start, and I'm very happy to be participating in that committee. 2017, uh, also giving orientation to new committee members. We'll just continue that as needed. And, you know, please, we invite you to join the marketing committee. And like I said, it, you know, you saw the list of goals we have and the list of tasks that we have. So you don't have to participate in all the tasks. If there's something in particular that you feel you are the most, um, that you have the gift for, then definitely make sure you make that aware to the LDC for the application. And uh, we look forward to having you on the committee. And I believe that covers everything from the marketing side, unless there happen to be some questions. But, yeah, the CE directory was the only thing, and that got put in the okay. chat box. So, all right, thank you. So, thank you, Stephanie. And you know. Specifically, um, committees like like the marketing committee, and well, frankly, I think all of the committees. Uh, but you know, one thing also is is you 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 get to hone your skills there too. So if you have a skill that you really like, but you might want to take it in a different direction, you know, this is a, the the committees are a great way, you know, so that you're also getting benefit out of it too. Yeah, and and plus we're all fun to work with. So um, I'm really um, pleased to turn over this next section to Don Hoag. She is the committee chair for the National Teacher Training Curriculum Development Committee, and she's going to give you a report on what's what's happening with that committee. 
So uh, thank you everybody for tuning in today. It is my pleasure to share with you about the National Teacher Training Curriculum Development Committee, the NTTCDC as we like to say. Um, I have the pleasure of serving as chair and working closely with Gloria Lawrence as the board liaison to our committee. Our members include Sue Bibick, Brent Jackson, Sandy Mason, Julie Mezzi, who by the way was the 2015 Educator of the Year Award winner. We also have John Morgan, Brenda Rayner, Heidi Sue Roth, Cherie Sonen Mo, and Penny Shoemaker Jeffrey, who you'll hear from next. Um, our mission, the mission of our committee, is to design and create a comprehensive framework based on the core competencies for curriculum development, assessment, instruction, and training of educators in our field. Also to develop a network of instructor training and support resources. Uh, the framework is really the word that I want to emphasize related to that mission and we spent a lot of time as a committee really um, honing that mission statement so that it would really support our goal. The framework is, is the word we chose so that the Alliance can create content that will fit within that framework but that it's also a structure that other providers can create content that will also meet the core competency requirements, much like the resources, the teacher resources that Sheree mentioned earlier. The current committee charges for our committee include the completion of an assessment table. That was something that we shared at last year's Educational Congress and we have completed this assessment table for the first standard of the core competencies. We put that out for public comment and all the feedback that we received is very, very much appreciated. Um, we are working on some revisions to that based on those feedback. Uh, that feedback that we received and what I really took away from the feedback was that um, as a committee it would be helpful for us to create some very useful examples and some effective explanations to help and show people how to use this assessment table and how it works um, as, a, as an accompaniment to those core competencies. So we're in the process now of making those revisions and, and just really getting that standard one exactly as we want it to be. We're also in the process um, compiling a list of different types of assessments that are commonly used um, in massage education for instructors, um, much like we do in our classrooms for students. And we are beginning to develop our teacher training program curriculum that will be designed and created on behalf of the Alliance itself. That's really the next piece that we're leading into once we complete our assessments table. As a part of that process, we're also going to determine whether we want to complete all 10 standards of the assessment table in the same way that standard one looks now. Um, at this time, we have part of the table complete for all 10 standards um, related to the competency itself and a measurable outcome, which would be um, a way that an instructor would demonstrate their compliance in relation to the competencies. So again, we're, we're um, working together to decide if standard one is an effective guide or should all ten of those um, standards be complete on the assessments table. The current project um, related to the assessments table is uh, designing an assessment handbook that would include that standard one as an example and again, um, you know, showing the user how that is designed to be a guide uh, for creating content that will meet the standards and, and allow an instructor to demonstrate their competency in those standards. And then, and then the big, really the big, big task is creating the model teacher training curriculum template. So that is, um, we're simultaneously working on that as we finish up the assessments table and um, that's really going to take the bulk of our attention here for the next few months. It's the perfect segue and the perfect note on which to pass the baton to the certification process committee which is coming up next with Penny. So thank you all very much for your attention. I am joining you from Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm here to uh, give you an update on a relatively newly formed committee. It, it formed the last half of 2015 called the Certification Process Committee. So this was established to help um, complete phase four of the NTESP. We have a very uh, 
a diverse membership uh, in this committee. Myself, I serve as the board liaison and chair. Celia Bucci, Lisa Mertz, Bob McCaddy, and Cindy Baker are, Banker are all members. They represent uh, faculty, classroom uh, teachers, continuing educators, both in the massage therapy profession as well as beyond. Next slide, please. So our committee was uh, charged with, of course, working with the Leadership Development Committee to popu be populated, which uh, they have been um, so wonderful at, at helping us do, particularly to get that aspect of a diverse, um, diverse background with our members. We then are, are charged to create a framework for the certification process. So this would include a curriculum outline, an actual process to evaluate teacher training courses, and then a portfolio process for existing teachers as well as CE providers. So the idea is the portfolio will enable educators to demonstrate you know, their knowledge, their skills, uh, their attitudes, all in alignment with the core competencies. We also were charged with determining the uh, advisability of developing a research article based on the 2010 surveys. That survey looked at uh, the climate uh, for teacher education in the profession. We also needed to write a value proposition statement for our teaching certificate program, making sure that we were um, uh, very open with the value that it would give to someone to complete. We also want to continue uh, working with the board of directors and selecting a certifying body. The other accomplishment is that we looked at the data for the 2010 surveys and it clearly that data indicated a really strong desire and a need in the profession for teacher preparation but that data was already published previously and I think it's still actually available on the Alliance website but there wasn't um, when you look at the data there wasn't any relevancy to create a research report on it so we decided that we will let that data stay as it is with on the Alliance website but not really write any other additional reports up. We also then went ahead and prepared a teacher education curriculum, just a draft, a framework, and forwarded that to, um, to Dawn and, and um, uh, uh, Dawn's uh, NCTCC uh, committee. So now we're really concentrating efforts on creating the certification pathway. Uh, next slide. All right, so these are um, these are discussions that we've had regarding, you know, what are going to be some of the requirements for applying for the portfolio pathway for this entry level um, classroom teacher piece. One, the committee decided that applicants should have a foundation and a somatic based area of expertise, but not necessarily be required to be a licensed massage therapist. The second is that this applicant should have, have at least two years of continual classroom teaching experience that includes teaching a minimum of one course per semester. And that teaching can actually occur at the level of a teaching assistant or lead instructor. Okay. Um, again, there are going to be rubrics that are created in this evaluation process that are going to be specifically linked to the core competencies for evaluating the candidate. Next slide. The certification, of course, will not supersede any state laws that are already in place regarding the number of years required to have your license in order to classroom teach with that. And next slide. And the application. Penny, you're, 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 you went off mic. Penny, do you want to start back over on this? We couldn't hear you. <laughs> All it right. Looks like she got. It looks like she got. Uh, I don't even see her in the listing anymore. Cherie, uh, do you want to finish this up for her? Yeah. Uh, she, hopefully she'll 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 call back in. Uh, I know that she was almost done here, everybody. Um. So so essentially, um. I'm trying to, I'll just I'll just go back to this this 
the 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 application and and this is not in Estonia it's not done but this is what they're they're the committee is working on and starting to propose you know that you're going to have to have some kind of you know CV or resume you know what your statement is two letters of recommendation uh, from people who have actually witnessed you your teaching uh, they're also going to have you know some kind of um, uh, you hear me? App- now we can yay you're oh back. My- Goodness gracious. Okay. Thank you, Sharif, for continuing with that. Yeah, I heard you talk this slide. That's fine. We can move through with that. Yeah, the big piece to, to consider with this application is we are going to require that all the materials are from a single course. So when this applicant submits lesson plans and examples of formative and summative assessments and evaluations, it all should come from the same course. Next slide. All right, and here are the final bits. So one of the things in, in teacher education and evaluating that is the importance of video evidences. And so there will be video evidence evidences required for the applicant. Um, we're requesting that they're 10 minutes in length, and it's going to be a reflection of the applicant teaching a concept, engaging in questioning with the students, and that whole classroom interaction piece. So along with these other application materials, we certainly want to see um, video evidences as well. Uh, next slide, and I think that may have been it. Yeah, so just to wrap up, again, these are all in kind of a, a working phase right now. We still will have to wait for final board of director approval, but this is what the, the committee is focused on and moving forward and trying to get this whole um, framework created in the next few months. Thank you. Thank you very much, Penny, and uh, I thank everybody. Uh, you know, this the whole the last two committees that you heard from. You know, they're sort of the 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 key foundation of what the alliance has has been based on, and and that is our the NTESP, you know, the National Teacher Education Standards Project, and you know we've been working on this since the beginning and with, with the core competencies and getting that document done and now moving through the next phases and we're, 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 we're moving at you know sometimes it feels you know exceptionally fast sometimes it feels like a snail's pace you know because there's so much we want to do but it, truthfully if we look at this from a global perspective we have accomplished a lot in a very short time and that's really due to having really hard working um, board members, committee members, people that are dedicated, um, all of you who are our members and many of you who uh, I'm sure are the ones who gave feedback on the surveys that we sent out, for, particularly in, in this last case for this last project. Um, you know, we really, we really appreciate that. Yes? We do, we do have a question. Um, okay. It was submitted. They're wondering if the Alliance has a vision for teacher education helping CE providers navigate the patchwork of state laws regarding CE or helping with the portability of classroom teachers moving from state to state and obtaining state licenses. <coughs> so in the, the, that's it's a, a complex question. We are totally committed to supporting CE providers, you know, and that's why when Penny was talking about, I mean, we're, they're starting with doing classroom teacher, but then you know they will be moving into certification for CE providers. We are very active in the coalition, working with all the other stakeholders, and and particularly working with um, NCB and the federation to clear up what they're doing. <coughs> so. Uh, I guess the short answer is yes, although we don't have a specific um, task. You wanting to know if the slides will be available and for those um, who attended, and yes, the slides will be made available um, along with the recording. Since the recording is so long, what we did last year is we, um, we didn't edit it, but we sliced it uh, into chunks and uploaded it onto our YouTube channel, the AFMTE.org, as well as we'll have those embedded on the website page under the annual business meeting on the website, which can be found under the About page. 
RV About tab, it, it'll be listed there. And the slides will be put there as well. Um, one of the other questions is, is there a massagebodyofknowledge.com? Let me re-ask that question because I think the question was, is there still a Massage Body of Knowledge committee? Uh, there is, it's not an active, never really, I wouldn't call it a committee, there was a task force. Um, Pete, do you remember what the, what, what's the, or what the technical yes, name we was doing, for that? Yes, we were doing a, a, a kind of an evaluation and a recalibration of the BOK. Um, the board itself um, has connected with many of the people who were on the original task force and as part of our job in 2016-2017, we are going to do a little uh, uh, looking at the BOK and uh, updating some of that, but we currently don't have a, a, a committee uh, in force for that. Right. And, uh, yeah, but, but the body of knowledge is still out there and the people who were involved, the task force that were involved, are still interested in, in doing an update. There's just not a, a, a specific time frame for when that next update phase will happen. There's so many yeah. things happening in, in our industry, you know, that, that some projects just have to take more priority. But this is why it's really important, and I'm, I, I'm going to sound like such a nag here, but this is why it's so important that you all get involved, because the more people we have involved that are volunteering and are on committees, the more work we get accomplished. Um, and so the more we can, we can really serve this profession, you know, and serve our, our, our membership and our, our future membership and educators. Uh, so it, it, takes, it takes a lot of us to, to get these things done. So if there are other projects, I mean, great, ask us, because, you know, the, the likelihood is we, we probably have something on the burner. Uh, but if not, you know, that we can get it into our strategic plan, you know, or maybe there's a project that, you know, if, if you've got passion about, maybe you'd like to, to, to get involved in that, and when we can find a space or create a project and, and help you with the other support to make that happen. And Cherie, I just wanted to circle back to the CE question. Yes. Um, that would be something that uh, would be a very long-term task and very much involve legislative processing. So uh, we are very supportive of CE teacher standards, and um, I'm not sure if the question was asked um, how we can affect the legislative process in all 50 states, but it, it seems like that is going to be uh, a large task which would take a lot of money to do. Yes, yes. And it, 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 it fits in ultimately, you know, with what we're all about. So the more that people really want to have this done, you know, then we have to, like Pete said, figure, find a way to get more people involved and to get funding to make that happen. But we are do other things that we're doing are, are already going to impact that. With with the things that we're doing, with this with the whole new um, certification um, process that will be available so that you know that we will have a way of vetting teachers, whether you're in a classroom or if you're in a CE setting. And I think when we start having those kinds of standards out there and then we see accrediting organizations in terms of schools to start backing this up and we already have verbal support from, from several of them that they're really excited about what we're doing, uh, that, that's how things happen. It, it, it moves slowly in the legislative world, unfortunately. Are there any other questions? Deanna? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we had a question just wondering if the slides will be available to those who attended. I, I don't know the answer to that. Well, we're going to, um, there'll, there'll be the, the video, the whole video presentation will be available. And yeah, and yes, we'll, also be, we'll be also be making the slides available. That will happen. And, Yay. Mm -hmm. And Isn't then it? somebody... Yeah, somebody else just asked how many folks are on the call. Um, just so you guys know, we had about uh, 65 people all together, um, some, most of which are stu still on, but I think okay. that's pretty good attendance. I don't know. 
Oh, I do. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, of course, I would like every single member to be on here, but you know, a lot of them aren't. But, but a lot of them, I, I know, have already contacted us and said they can't, but they, they want to be able to, to, you know, look at the video and get that information. And so there were I, just two other comments, not really questions. Uh, early on, um, Ruth Werner said to during. Eric's presentation, great job on closed predict predictions, so I thought that was something <laughs> we should share with him. <laughs> and um, there was also, let me find it, uh, during the, the Educational Congress, during Nancy's presentation, there was a comment, could we make sure that there are speakers for marketing and at admissions, I, I assume for schools. That's in the plans. All right. That's, you know, we just have to make sure we get somebody who submits a proposal for that. Excellent. But I'm pretty sure we already do. But I, I can't. I don't know for sure. So, but it, it's definitely in the plans. Oh, we have another question. Do we have time to keep going? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Another question: Are you aware of any other organizations or agencies in the process of developing CE approval and CE teacher approvals? How does Alliance Teacher Standards work uh, to interact with those projects if they do? Well, I can address this, Cherie. Um, sure. I can say that I'm unaware of any other states that are working on initial development. Um, many states ha have no continuing education requirements. Uh, for instance, Colorado and California. And if those states were going to have some kind of uh, beginning process to, to vet continuing education providers, uh, we have a legislative liaison who is me, and uh, we would teach the state uh, board and the state legislators about the teacher training and the core competencies and uh, encourage them to use those as some of their standards. Um, if you're aware of some state that you're thinking about specifically, uh, this is to the questioner. Um, please do contact us, and we can support you in your state. Yeah. Can you repeat that question again, Deanna? Sure, and it's um, Carol Osborne. If I'm, I hope that's okay to share. Are you aware of any other organizations or agencies in the process of developing CE approval and CE teacher approvals? How does Alliance Teacher Standards work to interact with those projects if they do? Well, I mean, there's, you know, the, the CE approval, you know, the main organization that does that is NCB, National Certification Board. You know, and now there's, you know, the whole thing with the Federation and what, what they're working with and, you know, it is our, our hope and we've been really, you know, be very strong advocates that they, they really figure out a way to work together so that the state boards can feel comfortable and confident that um, that that the, the the courses that are being given CE credit fits fits within their parameters, and it's very easy to to go in and just identify what those courses are within the NCB framework. So there already are organizations that that vet the CE courses themselves. Um, I don't know of anybody else that's doing it on a national level and then in terms of the CE providers you know NCB you do have to uh, do a, an application to be a provider in you know Florida you have to do an application to be a provider uh, but usually um, you know, we work very closely now with the NCB and in the past they have asked us to be on their on, on task force to help them with their um, process for for vetting CE providers, and ultimately, you know, once we have our certification process done, that will probably be, you know, one pathway to being recognized within NCB to be able to offer CE courses. But I, I can only say probably because we don't have it yet. So, was there anything you wanted to add to that, Pete? No, that's good. Okay. Okay, somebody else asked who is the AFMTE legislative liaison? 
that be Pete? Pete Whitridge, our the past president. Excellent. Thanks for the update on the NCB and the Federation status on CE approvals and for your advocacy work. That probably extends to all of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's all I have next That's for it. now. Let's all right. Yep. Uh, does any of the other uh, presenters have anything else you want to add? This is Eric. I just want to thank everybody for participating. So I want to close it again with a little reminder, yes, of two things. Be sure to apply for the Educator of the Year Award uh, or to encourage other educators that you know, whether they be a teacher or a CE provider, to apply. And then, you know, see you in my hometown in Tucson. I know some of you are going to Tucson in the summer, <clears throat> but that became because out of the last time we had it here, people loved it here and they wanted to come back. And so we're doing that, and it's you know I think the rate's like $111 a night for a four-star resort. So it's a great rate. It's beautiful. You can you can come early, stay later. We we've worked it out so you can have several days before and after, at that same rate. And uh, you know it's going to be a fabulous event. And and again I really want to to thank our platinum sponsor Universal Companies. I mean they jumped in right away and have been our, our platinum sponsor and they're really excited and, and that just makes us excited to know that, that other organizations really see the value of our Congress and what we're doing and what we're hoping to accomplish and I really hope you join us. Yeah, I'm happy to close it. Yeah. Um, well. <laughs> so we will be we will be making available uh, links uh, for the video as Stephanie already discussed. Uh, we'll also be making available the slides. Uh, there will be a post conference or post meeting uh, press release that will go out that will have a link to the slide. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, and then here's our contact information. If you have any questions or if you're you know interested in becoming a member, uh, etc. Um, when this meeting finishes, there will be a link for a survey going out. So please take the time and give us some feedback because that's going to be really helpful for us. And otherwise, thank you so much for joining this meeting. Is there anything else, Deanna? Yeah, Tracy Walton would like to remind everybody to vote. And an yes. email will be going out uh, to all members uh, following this meeting. So if you didn't see it in your in your uh, inbox previously. Keep your eye out for today. Um, it will go out after this meeting. And if you have any problems, uh, email me uh, uh, directly. Yeah. The admin at afmt.org. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so thank you all, and uh, have a lovely, lovely week. And I look forward to seeing you soon.